Okay, everybody, we're going to do another beautiful painting. It's the Extreme Beginner series, so we're using our Prang Oval 16 set. Beautiful semi moist colors. We're going to create this gorgeous scene. It's a cityscape type scene or a city scene, street scene with a, a window. You can use your own imagination and pretend this might be a, a building along the street, so you can have like a street scene feel. Uh, you can even just think in your mind this might be a home with a patio and you have some uh, flower pots with flowers. Um, but basically we cover all the steps that you're going to need to create this wonderful painting. Basically we just start we start out with our pencil drawing and we cover that and I leave this right here on camera so you can see the pencil drawing as we're doing it. You have your reference right here on the right hand side of the picture as we're going. We get the pencil drawing in. First we do a light preliminary sketch just to get everything around the right area approximately. Then we go over with the darker pencil lines with our contour drawing where you just start in one area with our pencil lines and we just start basically almost tracing what we've you know did as far as our light sketch goes. And we get right through the whole painting and the flowers we just you know of course left it very loose just we just had some round pencil outlines for bunches of flowers with the flower pots and that's really it. It kind of goes really quickly and simply. Um, we co I cover all the aspects of how to get the splashing technique in here to get your flowers really loose. We covered one of the main ideas of this is mixing all the colors everywhere in the painting so we cover all how you mix your paints first in your palette then you start your painting and you just take all those colors and keep working them through the whole entire painting. Mixing all the same colors, the purples, the reds, the golds, all the earth colors, the browns and golds. And you just keep working all those colors through this whole painting and the finished product was really beautiful. And then we also touched on leaving those whites. All these little white speckles of light going through and little bits of light through all these flowers here in these flower pots and through here all those bits of light create that illusion of, of light of sunlight coming into the picture and we talked about the sunlight being over our heads around midday so these are all the fun things we cover in the video join along with us you'll have a great time you can try this painting two three different times you can change your colors around different flowers arrangements and you can add different colors and make uh, you know your uh, own color schemes if you want in your painting. You can make more limited colors or you might want to add more colors than I actually use so it's up to you. But we're gonna have a great time so buckle in and uh, we'll get started. Okay we're getting back into um, our painting process here and drawing process. We saw this finished painting just a few seconds ago so you're kind of seeing the um, what we're going to be our goal is going to be to try to get to and I think this is a real fun painting it's an extreme beginner series painting so this is more when we're starting out in watercolor we want to kind of keep things fresh fun enjoyable we don't want to try to tackle too many difficult style paintings I think in the beginning when I first started watercolor I definitely realized that doing small exercises was you know tremendously helpful like doing a couple pieces of fruit maybe a small vase of flowers um, maybe just a little small bit of a landscape with a tree or two and so, you know some mountains and kind of like keeping things more small and uh, manageable and then trying to get the result that I was looking for as far as colors and the, the light and dark of things trying to get some sunlight and some shadows into the um, painting so that's the kind of the goal here so I have some scrap papers and what I'll do is this is going to be more of an improvisational um, painting on my part I'm just going to try to create something uh, you know improvisational and um, go from there and that's a fun way too to um, work with watercolor you can use you know of course books photographs you can use um, uh, you could just set something up in your house like a small bouquet of flowers or some fruit or some vegetables and do a little quick sketches of those and do some quick painting. Those are great things to get started with when you're doing watercolor. Um, so what I think I want to do is maybe just have like an, a feeling of uh, like a maybe a window. And maybe this is like an outdoor scene. So like a window. So I'll kind of draw it here and I think you can kind of see it's 
we'll do a window like this. Maybe we'll have some uh, some window panes like this, and it doesn't have to be perfect. You can kind of see I'm just drawing in some window panes like this, maybe like this, and then under here we'll. We'll start to leave this bottom portion of the window and then maybe we'll make a little bit of a, a head dressing for the window with some trim like that. And then here we'll start to have some ideas of uh, like a flower box. So we're going to do a flower box under the window like so. So a flower box under the window. And then, even more interestingly enough, we're going to do some more flowers, maybe some potted plants here on the on the um, sidewalk, maybe in front of the window or on a area of patio on this scene. So I'm just going to do some. You can kind of see some flower, like just some round shapes, like for like bouquets of flowers or you know a flower pot and the potted plants here and some clay vases or any kind of um, pots that you can imagine for for this scene and maybe there's some different shaped plants here and there but I think that's enough to give us the idea of um, our composition here. So a window, you can make it even more simple than this, and you can paint in your details. So I drew it kind of dark here so you can see what I'm going to create. So I'm going to create this idea on our paper here, and this is like about an 8 by 10 or 7 by 9, something like that, rectangular shape in the uh, portrait um, position so the painting's more upright, like so. And that'll be the idea. And we'll just do it a little larger here on the paper. Not not that much larger, but a little bit larger than this. And I'll I'll set this up over here so you can see that. I'll do it right there. Good. And that maybe we'll do it down here first so we can get the top of the window. And what I'll do is I'll take a small piece of tape and I'll just tape down my picture here so that it doesn't move all around when we're working. So that'll be that. And then we're going to start up here and we're going to maybe make the window, maybe we can, yeah, let's leave it centered. So I'm just going to do a light sketch first and then I'll go over it with a darker sketch. So if you can't see this, don't worry about it. I'm going to go over it with a darker sketch. I'm just going to get my uh, lines in here so I kind of get the feel for the composition on the paper here. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then if I do this, okay, that's the flower box. Okay. Okay, so I kind of just did a real quick sketch just to get everything in place that I need. Now I'll set this over here. And then we'll just go over with a darker pencil line. So now I'm just going to go over with a darker pencil line so we can see it. And I'm just going to contour draw this, which is um, starting in just one place and then working right through. So I'm going to do that. And then over here. I'll move into the flowers next. Let me, I'm going to do the window first. So 
So I'm going to do the upper portion of the window first, and then we'll do maybe we'll do three panes of glass up here, three here. I'll do these more lightly, like that, and then the other lower pane here. And the same thing, three panes here. And then the other three are sort of below here, and the flowers are in front in the window flower box here. And then we have on the, and then we'll have our building. This is the building, bottom of the building. And this might be a sidewalk here, like that. I'm not going to make a big deal out of the sidewalk and the bottom of the building here, but I did, did want to put that in with some good dark pencil lines so you kind of see um, this overall design of this. So this is pretty good. Let's do the the flower pots here. So you just, I'm going to do this. I'm going to leave the flowers, I'm just going to paint the flowers with my brush and I'm not really going to draw in anything. We'll make them very loose and very free looking. We'll do some shadowing, so that now is a good time. We'll think about where's our light source coming from. Maybe we can do the light coming from uh, maybe maybe directly overhead would be good. So let's let's say that our light source. We'll make sure we put that in our painting here on our tape. So the tape I created a tape a border artist tape around the border of the paper and this is actually uh, satin paper, Arches satin paper and I do the um, light insignia with the light spotlight like this and that means the lights overhead pretty much like maybe noontime and uh, that'll give us our shadow pattern so if the light is directly above us or a little bit above us, maybe behind us a touch, we'll maybe get that shadowing along the underside of the of the window and the the sash over here. And then we can just kind of pencil in a few little shadow and over here there's going to be some shadows on the shadow box from the flowers and there's going to be a little bit of shadowing here at the bottom of the painting where the um, potted plants are and the flowers, so we'll see a little bit of that on the the ground. And I think that looks good. So that's our pencil, pencil sketch, contour drawing. Um, we're going to just have fun, mix up some colors, pre-mix every... We're going to try to pre-mix quite a bit here on the palette. This way, when we start to paint, we already have our a game plan with our colors here first. Then we can just start painting and comfortably work from our palette and not have to be mixing a lot of paints while we're working. We'd rather just focus on the painting and getting our washes in really well and kind of move at a good pace because things dry fast with watercolor. So we want to kind of be able to have a rhythm and a, like a, a beat and a tempo with our painting. So if we mix our colors first over here in our palette, or if you have your palette on the right side, however you have your palette, it should be close by if you hold it in your hand, let's say. Some people, I like to hold my palette in my hand if I'm working um, outdoors or if I'm sometimes if I'm seated with my easel, I'll, I'll use my palette and just hold it in my hand. Um, it depends. Um, what, what seems to be more comfortable at the time, but in this case we have it set up on our table here and um, we'll keep our pencil drawing here. And uh, we'll start in just a second. I want to take a quick 5-10 minute break and we'll come back and we'll start painting. And the first thing we'll do is mix up some colors and then we'll get started. All right, so we're getting started again. We're going to start mixing our paints, and uh, we're going to use our uh, typical brushes that we use um, here. Simply Simmons number no. six, I use a lot. Um, Princeton Neptune round brush. I use the Princeton um, five-in-one set, which comes with a couple of uh, square brushes or flat brushes, and then a couple round brushes. 
I also use the uh, brush that comes with the um, Prang Oval 16 set. So if you're if you're here for the first time, I want to say thank you for coming by my channel, watching, painting along with us. Maybe you never have painted before, so the Extreme Beginners uh, series, which I have on my channel here on YouTube, if you just type in Extreme Beginners in the um, search uh, bar in YouTube, you'll see all my begin Extreme Beginner series um, paintings and, and uh, tutorials. Um, and those are good to work on if you're just starting out. And you can also watch my other videos um, t as well. It always helps to watch as many videos as you can. You get the knowledge uh, from watching the videos and you can see all kinds of different techniques and methods and different you know art supplies and everything like that. So the more you watch videos, um, the more you're going to learn and catch on to things and be able to uh, uh, make better paintings. So this is the Oval 16. Prang Oval 16 we're using, semi-moist, so you just give this paint set of just a spritz or two, and it really, everything gets soft and moist to paint with. And um, and it's very inexpensive, so if you're just starting out again, uh, and you don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on art supplies, these are very inexpensive, maybe $15, $10 or $15 for the Prang set, and then you can get... Um, these five, you know, there's there's about four or five brushes in one little packet for the uh, Princeton uh, brush sets, and um, there may be five dollars, six, seven dollars for four or five brushes, and it's and the Prang set comes with this one here, this brush here, a good, really good round brush, and maybe eventually you, you might pick out like a few brushes you might see online. These are really good, the um, Simply Simmons brushes, and they're these are all incidentally. Um, these are synthetic brushes, and what's great about synthetic brushes when you're just starting out in watercolor is they don't hold that much water, so when you are using your brushes, it'll tend not to flood out your paper with too much water. If you're in the beginning in watercolor, it's a learning curve. It takes a while. It actually takes a good amount of time in watercolor to kind of get the feel for the water, the paints, how to mix, how much water to use, all these different things. It's a, it's a lot to... So when you first start out, you, you never get frustrated. You just you keep working at it, and eventually you'll get the feel for it. It's like, like riding a bicycle or a sport, you know, getting used to throwing a, a football or a baseball, or if you're music, you know, if, you're, if you've ever played musical instruments, you know that when you first start, it's slow going. You got to get your, uh, you know, your scale, your scales done first, really slow, and your chords and um, whatever instrument you might play. If you play drums, you got to learn the paradiddles and the simple uh, things in the beginning to get your drumsticks going good. So whatever it is, whether it's musical, if you can just think of it as watercolor is the same as, you know, like sports or learning a musical instrument or learning about mathematics. If you're into math and something, you know, something like that, you have to start out with the basics, you know, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and then you start working into all the other um, you know, disciplines of mathematics. So whatever it is, if you can always just relate it back to watercolor, it's no different. When you're doing watercolors, it's slow going in the start. You just get in there, you start doing it, and you just have fun with it. The most thing is just having fun, enjoy it, uh, learn a little bit at a time, tinker around with it as you go. The more time you put into it, you know, it's going to be a little bit, uh, you'll learn a little quicker. And, um, you know, and as, as well, if you're sticking with my channel, you'll learn a lot because I try to cover the basics and fundamentals all the time with watercolors on my channel here. So that's the thing that I think is the most important value in my channel here on YouTube. And what I do is I try to always cover the basics all the time on all my videos. So I won't just start painting and not tell you about how to use the brush and how to use the water bucket and how to change your water in your water bucket. You know all these things if you follow me on a regular basis, but if you're brand new here, welcome you. I'll give you all the basics all the time so you don't have to worry. You'll get it. You'll get it. You'll get a really good feel for watercolor after, you know, after some time here. Maybe it's a, a month or two, maybe it's a couple years, but you will get there. And again, the more you practice, the quicker you'll learn. And, you know, if you don't have a ton of time to put into it, not a problem. It just takes a little longer, but you'll get there. So, we're going to paint, we're going to mix our paints first. So I'm going to look at this and I'm just going to get a real good mix of colors. Let me use some yellow over here. Orange, yellow, red. I think this is cool. We can just get some good mixtures of colors. Let's, let's do some greens up here and blues. Greens. 
So I'll do the lighter green over here, the darker green over here, maybe a little bit of the lemony kind of mix in the middle there with some of this. And then up here, let's go with some, oh, down here, let's do some blue. We'll do some blue here, some red and purplish. We'll make a purple. We got purple here too. We got lots of great colors on this set here. We got beautiful colors in this set. So we got purple here. These, these could be our shadow colors. These will be our flower colors and also the greens. We can use a little bit of brown and green mixture. That'll give us like a nice kind of low-key green, like an olivey type green. I just keep mixing until I see that looks like a good olive green, like that. And I think that's a good start for, for what we need to do here. We've got the really warm colors, the exciting reds, oranges, and yellows right there in the center. Some of the cooler purples and blues over here. And then we have our greens up here, nice fresh greens here, the lighter, more warmer greens like the, with the yellow in there. And then some warmer uh, olive greens there like that. I think it looks good. We have a good range of colors. They're all out on the palette. Now we don't have to worry. Now we can just go in and paint and we don't we have everything already mixed and if you need to add some more colors to it that's no problem you can do that as you work so let's start and um, maybe we're gonna start with um, our flowers first so maybe I'll do this vase here so the light is coming from straight down so and I'll try to Mix up some different colors within the, like that, maybe we'll have a blue, purple vase here. And uh, the colors, we, we'd like to do our purple shadowing right when we're doing our vases, our, our flower pots I should say. So you can kind of fuse the bottom of the flower pot with the uh, shadowing and work the colors around like that. So, And then the shadows will get lighter as they go further out from the flowers. So that's something we can remember. And then a great way to control our washes if we remember to um, rinse the brush off, dry off the water, so now it's just a brush that I've rinsed, and then I dry it off with a paper towel or a tissue, and then you can thin out this and make the shadowing lighter, like so. And again, it's darker in here, and if you have to go in, you can always go in and get a little straight paint, like that, just to get it a little darker under there. And we can just keep working around that same idea. Here it's darker under here. I'll just splash a little bit to make it kind of mysterious in there. Let's add a little bit of orange in there too. Let's keep it warm and cool, not just everything all cool, like purple or a blue. Let's, let's mix in some of that orange too. And then we can just bring around that wash like that. More purple. And then again, as we do the purple, we can keep working it around like so. And then now we have time, we can rinse the brush off, dry off some of the water, and we can go in and grab some orange and yellow. Do some warmer mixes with the shadows. And then we can again rinse off the brush dry off the water a little bit and then just slowly dampen out the again rinse off the brush dry it off just keep a damp brush here now at this point and you can just sort of mix it get that lighter shadow area like that 
and then let's get some more and this actually is under this is shadows under these flowers so we could again infuse some darker darks under here and that we can even go in with the, some darker dark we could take some brown mix just a little tiny spot over here brown and purple and some more blue maybe a touch of red a really good dark there just to get some darker spots back in here like that and uh, let's do some more okay another Okay, that looks pretty good. Dry off the, rinse the brush off. I dry it off a little bit, and I could just still do some more. Some more of that lighter shadow. Maybe a little bit of splashing as well. And then let's get right into the flowers now. Um, We'll do some interesting colors with the flowers as well. We'll go with some purple. I rinse off my brush frequently as I'm mixing colors. And I'm just doing some fun, you know, kind of shapes some splashes. That's how I'm going to do the flowers. I'm going to try to make them really loose and fun. Some green in there too. I'll do some flower shapes like that and some leaf forms which are you know radiate out like so. And the key is not to do too much. Let's not do a, too much work in there. Let's leave a lot of white paper in there, bits of white paper. And then maybe um, over here, we'll pick up some of these yellows and oranges. And if you need to add a little bit of water, and now's a good time to change the water. I think we have, I think we're okay for right now, but I'm going to change my water in just a second or two, I think. And then again, I'm going to do the same thing. We're doing everything with the Simmons number six uh, brush, round brush, synthetic. And I'll take some of the lemony yellow, like that. And I'll bring some of that up there so that plant goes a little higher. And what we can do is get the colors on first, loosely, and you can go. we can go back in and um, add some more detail to it. But I think if we go... If we go just more abstractly first, and then we can go back in and do a little more fine-tuning, let's say. And again, I'm trying to leave white paper. So I'll do some reds and purple. Maybe some different types of shapes there. Over here, I'll splash a little bit. And we can intermingle those like that. Now some fresher looking greens here. And I'm going to try to disperse those everywhere. So I'm using that fresh kind of green look. I'll also try to put a 
I'll put some of that too in the shadows just to get a little bit of that green around the bottom of the painting so that it kind of harmonizes with the rest. And the same thing there. Some splashes too. Some fine lines here and there like so. That looks pretty good. And then over here we'll do some more maybe, uh, let's see. Now's the time when I might take a break. Let me take a break. We've done a lot of work so far on these flowers and the main idea was we're doing it very loosely, you know, dabbing the brush, doing a couple of these like you know, um, shapes of like leaf forms and, you know, branches and um, flowers that are very loosely though first. Then we can go back in and do a little more touch-ups if we have to, but we did, I did mention this, I really tried to keep a lot of those white spots on the flower area. Can you see how I used all these whites and I, of the paper? I didn't cover the whole paper. I left a lot of white spots of paper everywhere going through the whole passage, this whole area going right through. You can see all the white paper that I leave, spots of white paper all the way through. That really looks good. It kind of, it makes everything like a, a nice uh, even kind of flow of lights and colors. So that I think really works well. We would try, I would try to avoid, or myself, I try to avoid just putting large spots of blocking in large areas of color um, paint without having some of these lights in there. The, the lights make the flowers seem light and airy, like they're, you know, like you can kind of see behind them and kind of just gives them a nice lightness. Um, so well, let me take a quick break. Uh, this way I'm going to maybe, uh, we'll come right back and we'll get started again. I just need a quick break. Okay. All right, we're getting uh, started again. Let's Think about uh, as we come back up and we look, come, you know, I'm basically working standing at my table here, my art table. And uh, as I come up to my table, I look and I start to assess some things and say, okay, um, what can I do as I'm starting back up again? Um, good time to take a break and think about that. And then I say, well, my palette, let me uh, clean up my palette. Let me uh, empty my water. So I have some water here. It's getting a little murky. Let me uh, dump that out. I'll get some fresh, clean water. That's very helpful when we're doing a painting like this to change our water frequently and to also clean our palette. So I have um, some paper towels here. I'm going to dip the paper towels in the clean water. I'll clean a couple spots here on my palette maybe. So we have some more mixing area where we can introduce uh, just maybe another color or two if we, as we work. But I think we can leave these the way they are. They're pretty much we didn't, um, if you can imagine, we didn't mix these all together, these colors in our palette right here. We kind of left them pretty much separate, the colors, the different colors within the uh, mixtures. So you can kind of see it still looks pretty good. It's going to look like this on the paper. If it looks like this in the palette, it's going to look the same on the, on the watercolor paper. So that looks good. And what I did is I just got a new spot down here. I'm going to mix maybe, a, if I have need to, I can mix some more color here if something maybe a little different, but I think we're pretty good so far. And I'll, I'll get my brush again here. Same brush I'm going to try to use throughout the whole painting. And then maybe what I'll do is, um, maybe I'll get a little bit of brown mixture for the, um, an orange, maybe for this, uh, flower box here. We'll pretend that that's wood color. Like that. That looks good. So we have that wood flower box here. We can go in and get some straight paint. Like that. Make it a little darker at the bottom there. I think that looks good though. And what else? Can we do now as we're working our way up we're going to do the let's do the flowers next in the flower box here and i think we'll go with some more some reds here some red flowers some lighter looking i'm going to splash 
like that. And then once I do that, I can just sort of mix around and do some flower shapes like so. Maybe add a little bit of purple to the undersides of the flowers. Maybe a little bit of shadows there. That looks pretty good. And again, I'm trying to keep this light. Maybe a little more yellow here. Let's try to get some other mixtures of color. So I'll get some gold and yellow and try to maybe just add a little bit of that there. And then maybe some green too, some of that olive green. And I'm just going to do a couple, a couple spots of the green. We want to have that greenish color. That's always good. Lots of green leaf forms, leaves and like that. So I'm doing some splashing technique quite a bit here. And I always mention, if, if you really enjoyed my videos, please uh, subscribe. Right on the right hand side down here below, if you hit the subscribe button, all that does is it just actually, you know, you'll see my videos uh, when you open up YouTube the next time and it'll let you know that I've made a new video so you won't lose track of me, basically. That's all it is. And um, I definitely, uh, I can see here that we're really almost completed with this painting. We're really... Everything is working well. We have all of our lots of different colors, all mixed, you know, mixtures of different colors in here. Our beautiful purple shadows under these uh, potted plants here. And we're just going to continue with the same colors as we go up and into the window. And um, that, that should be it, really. So um, I, meant, I wanted to mention, though, too, um, I use a lot of splashing on this painting. And what uh, if you look up uh, Chris Petri splashing technique if you type that into YouTube Chris Petri splashing technique I've got probably four or five videos if not maybe ten on the technique so the the videos will be just about splashing and the technique that I use when I splash how to mix the paints what type of brushes you're going to use pretty much any brush but I kind of explain the real uh, details of it so that you can use the splashing technique um, effectively you know you can use different things you can take the pencil and get more fine fine speckles of splashing like that and then if we move our this way we have a stucco beautiful stucco look on the wall here beautiful stucco walls here on this city type scene so and then you can use a little bit of purple too we don't want to just use one color let's use a couple colors and we'll use some purple. And you, again, you can use like that. And then if you find that it's a little bit too, um, if you find that it's a little bit, if you feel like you've made too many um, splashes, you can just actually blot up a little bit like this. And they sort of disappear. So if you feel like, oh, I went overboard with the splashing, no, no problem. You blot up a little bit with a tissue, like so. And they look much lighter and barely visible. And then once they dry, they'll be even lighter yet, because we always know watercolor dries lighter. So when you put watercolor on your paper, it's always going to look lighter when it's when it's dry. So, and uh, so that's one way you can alleviate a, a situation that you might oversplash too much. But again, I do have those videos. If you just type in Chris Petri splashing technique, you'll see four or five videos at least that I have that go over splashing technique in real. Um, uh, copious detail. So I am going to continue on here with the, um, some more greens, that fresh looking greens here. And again, I'm not trying to overdo this. Um, let's do some orange maybe. Orange there, maybe a little bit of orange if I do that. I'll take that orange and put it in a few other spots too. And then maybe some gold with that too. Like that. Maybe some purple. Like 
and maybe some interesting uh, we'll do some greens and maybe we'll do like an interesting and again you can do these once you're um, done with the main portion of the flowers and on this painting you can go in and do some of these twigs and branches so you can add a little more to it I'm, in, I'm going to keep this more simple you can add a little more like this. You can do a few more of these branches and things like that and add some more flowers to them. And, um, you know, it's up to you. I wouldn't go too much, but like we can make an orange flower up here maybe, or a yellow golden color flower up here, like this. to it too maybe like that and I think that's about it I'm not going to do too much more I think we have plenty of uh, flowers and interesting um, colors lots tons of we can see here we we've done a lot of really exciting flowers and colors now let's make sure we continue up here let's do our windows I'm just going to start out by doing the, the panes of the glass. And I'm not going to take too much time. I'm going to use warm and cool everywhere. And I can go back in and do darker uh, colors too. Um, uh, shadow colors if I want. We'll do that. We'll do some shadowing on these windows. Once we're this, we're going to do this bit of washes now on the window and then once it dries 100 percent then we'll go over with another glazing of color with a darker color to make shadows and it'll look really great so we're not going to try to do too much right now we can add in some greens too to the again i'm trying to mix all the same colors here and try to put those into the windows too as well like the colors it would be, you know, easy just to say, oh, let's make all the window panes purple. But if we just think a little bit more, like let's harmonize all the colors throughout the painting. Lights and warm and cool everywhere. Mixtures of all the same colors. We're going to be really... better off that way if we just try to keep mixing all the colors to harmonize everything so yellows golds that's what's great about mixing colors too on the palette when we start because then we just keep going back in and reusing all the same colors the only issue we do have sometimes is if these get too mixed up and muddy looking that's when we'll have to we'll have to wipe down the palette again and add fresh colors again in there but we did keep these pretty much separate, the colors as we worked, so I think that is to our advantage. And then this here, this is the shadow here, like that. Make it a little darker there. So I'm going to do the shadow under this part of the window right now and let it kind of just all blend in. It's, it's great if you can do it all at one time, the shadowing along with the, uh, let's just do it all at one time actually, instead of like that. And the main takeaway from when we're doing the shadowing on the window is we want to keep it all even. So if you can see up here on this portion of the uh, drawing, we want to keep our shadows the same width like this. So if we have our shadow this wide up top, we want to have that same width of shadow there and that same width of shadow here. So wherever you think there might be some shadowing. And then under here, this is going to be a little different up there, but under here is going to be shadow too. So I guess the shadows are going to be under the parts of the window that are closest to us. So what I'll do is think I think 
that looks good. And then we can always go over with more shadowing, but I think there's going to be a shadow here. And we're going to add some red to, and gold to that too. Just so it's not... Um, we don't... I, I always try to avoid just making like one color when I'm working. If I have all these colors down here, I need to do that same concept up top or wherever else I'm working in the painting. So now that I have this shadow, then I'll put in some other colors in like that, just to make it interesting, warm and cool. Purples and then reds and oranges and yellows. And uh, I think this is go this probably needs to be like that. and maybe a little darker under here so you can add blue and purple and make this a little darker there a little darker there and up here too like that And then I try to let, let this kind of flow down in there. And I think this is good. This is probably, yeah, this is a finished painting, basically. We did get those uh, stucco splashes on here for the, uh, the uh, wall. We have um, maybe a little bit, we could use some, sh maybe some shadowing and a little bit of color here just to maybe along the wall here just to kind of give it a little bit of color so that it you can kind of see that it's separate like that the wall is over here and then the sidewalk area is over here or the patio this might be a patio or a sidewalk you can use your you know have your imagination pretend you know this is you know whatever you want to do you can you know kind of make it your own idea it could be a sidewalk it could be a patio here you could put a few lines in to, if it's a sidewalk, let's say, this could be a street scene, um, this could be a, the back of a house, like a patio. You create your own world when you're doing your artwork. You pretend things and, and have a good time with it, and that's what's fun about artwork. You can just kind of, kind of have a fun time and get into the, the, the scene itself and the colors and the, the light and all these cool things. And, before you know it, your painting is looking great, and I'll use a little bit of yellow here. Very, very light bit of yellow, just to... And that's a little bit of yellow. If so, if you pre-wet the paper a little bit, or you just take a tiny bit of the yellow and put that on the the wall here, the stucco wall, just a little bit of orange or yellow, just to give it that warm feel, like the sunlight feel. The sunlight is uh, here on the on the wall and on the window, and there's shadows, and I think that looks really good. Um, and this is good. This is a completed painting. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, we used uh, really good methods here to get this done. Again, just to recap a little bit, and maybe we'll talk about this too when we start up again. Uh, at the beginning of the video, you'll see I show you the finished painting, what it looks like when it's um, completely dry, and we'll peel off the tape and, and all that. But basically, if we just wanted to go through a quick synopsis of what we did, we started out with our pencil sketch, First we did a real super light sketch to make sure we had everything in the right spot on the paper. Then we did our darker contour drawing all the way through. Then we took a break. Then we came back. We put all of our colors that we wanted to use in our painting into our palette. 
uh, mix that, which is important to do, because if we pre-mix things, um, we're actually going to be uh, way better off. Um, so we pre-mixed everything in the palette over here uh, first, so that this way we can just start our painting and we don't have to worry about mixing any colors. We're just going right in and painting. Uh, and then we just were careful to make sure as we were working with our flowers down here, we were putting in the shadows while these uh, potted plants were still wet. So we painted the pot first, then we fused in and worked our purple shadows right in to the bottom of the uh, vases so everything kind of fuses together and looks really good, like it all flows out nicely and there's no harsh edges. And then we remember we just did the flowers by splashing a lot and putting in flower shapes with speckles of paint and also doing some leaf forms like this, leaving lots of whites in here everywhere, here and there. So you can kind of see lots of white paper in there. That gives us that effect of, ah, the beautiful sunshine, right? If we didn't have those little white bits of paper, we wouldn't. it wouldn't feel like it's a sunny day and there's sunshine bouncing around on the flowers and in this scene. So that's, that's, a, that's another thing I wanted to mention. And then um, just remembering to mix uh, the colors, the same colors we use down below. We want to make sure we use those same colors up here in the, uh, in the upper portion where the window is. So we wouldn't want to um, create this window and then have no mixtures of colors. We want to keep all the same colors here we want to bring those up into the window here. Like you're seeing, I'm starting to add just a little more color so that the colors are all mixing together and they're all the same repeating colors up here above. And that's pretty much it. That's really the whole process in a quick um, synopsis here. And we're going to come back soon. And just before you know it, we'll be creating another video. And I'm so thankful you're here to watch and join along with us. We're having a fun time. And uh, always please, you know, feel free, thumbs up the video if you like it, and leave comments if you have questions. Uh, everyone uh, is really happy to see all your comments in the comment section of the video below, so that, you know, you share your experiences of how this painting went for you, things you might have learned, um, and, um, you know, anything that you feel is a good thing to bring into the conversation here on this uh, particular video. And until we meet up again, thank you so much again for watching my videos, the beautiful comments, everyone, thank you so much for encouragement and for uh, the positivity uh, in the comments section all the time. Many of you are always, you know, really kind and gracious uh, with really compliments and good insights to what we're doing here on our channel. So we'll see you in just another short while.